Since Johnny last appeared on the show, we have inundated with requests to get him back involved. And with Tins sunning no, don't read himself in Australia. That's oh. the script. Oh. Line. Just read your just lines, which are the, the, the warm-ups. Unique New we York. We call him fucking the show. A tarantula enjoys a fine chewing gum. Alex, tr- hello, Dream no, Team. No, you're reading <laughs> the wrong part. <laughs> and welcome along to the good, bad and the rugby in <laughs> partnership with our good friends, Continental Tyres. Yeah. Right on cue. Yeah. Oh, right, Johnny, just do the fucking Read warm-ups. Read the things, because your voice will seize up again. The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. Is an arsonist somebody obsessed with fire? Yes. yes. Christ. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? Are you going to be okay? I hope so. I am nervous because I don't want my voice to pack in. But we've got, for those who can't, who can't yeah, I've see... Yeah, I've started on those. I've global drove them. What's a global drove? That's the service that we have to use before we take any medicine, vitamin or anything oh, like for, that. Oh, for anti-doping. For anti-doping so yeah. you put a whole soother in your anti-doping Tramadol thing. is now banned in yeah. competition that's as a bit of the 1st of January. That's from a whole soother. Right? We, that's pretty punchy in compa- yeah. Mm-hmm. But we had that to Are you talk. taking Tramadol today to get through No way. Well, <laughs> no way. I have. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so, so whole soothers you've locked. Global Joe says halls soothers are not prohibited. Not prohibited. Right. Excellent. You've got some Harry Bow, are they prohibited? I'd rather not eat those. Why is that? Rig? Yeah, just too many Putting sugars. Right, too many sugars. Um, or we've got some Oreo ice cream in case your vocal cords... That's been there a while now. It's probably melted. Oh, so you're turning your nose up against... Okay. Uh, I, I'm hoping to be all right. Okay, but you, you, we were hoping you were going to be all right last time. Yeah. And someone planted a small seed that you were going to be unable to speak, and over 30 minutes, you completely lost your voice, had a breakdown, and then your bladder, seemed, your prostate seemed to swell up the size of a watermelon. Yeah, I need to get you that were urinating every- I have got a pile. <laughs> Of what? Um, what was it called? What's his name? Jeff? No. I don't How get do you know? Have it. you seen it? Yeah, it pops out from time to Does time. Does it? Yeah. Fucking oh, hell. Oh, my this God. Who, did, you, who, did you pop it back in again? Or? I've shown the okay. lads it. Right. Well, the pile? That, what, yeah. What's his name? It hasn't got a name, but it looks Well, it like... needs a name. If it's going to pop in and out. I mean, if it's, do you charge it rent? I mean, it's technically living in your body. It's basically a hernia. It comes out when I'm stressed or fatigued. <laughs> Can I, can I go home? <laughs> no, no, right. Okay, so your voice is fine, but your anus might... Is, is my weakened. anus right now is fine. It's weakened. Well, that's um, great news. My, voice, my voice is at risk. Right, but your drug testing's covered. The drug testing is covered. Do you want to talk about these sock, is, socks you got on? Why, um, why are you wearing England socks? They're not England socks. They're Chimera socks, right. um, which is recovery gear. I played yesterday. They're calf socks for compression recovery, but there's infrared technology embedded in the in the fabric which increases blood flow <laughs> it does it you should probably get some inter- infrared pants see if you can pop the the thing back up well, it needs it doesn't need stimulation it needs right. probably right. ice i can't hold on to this show for very much longer Hello, everybody, and welcome along to this week's episode of Good, the Band, the Rugby in Partnership with our very good friends at Continental Tires. I'm not sure the previous content was exactly what was in the deck when they signed up to be our title sponsor, <laughs> but it's what they've got at the start of this week's show. We have, ladies and gents, we've got an assortment of survival kit Provisions. here. We've got sweets and ice cream and hall soothers because it's a great <laughs> pleasure to welcome back John May for the return, which is a little bit like John Wick, but with a bit more coughing and spluttering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sort of and having to have mo- a lie down. movie screen character. How are you? I'm good. Th- I feel embarrassed a little bit to like look at the camera. I'm, I'm no, you do. You why? take on the what camera. You, you give happen? a little side eye. I, know. Know. I just get happen? a bit nervous. Um, we are so excited to yeah, have you I'm, back. Yeah, I'm, I'm cautious because the sequel is never as good as the it first is. hit out. This, this can only go so in one direction. I don't want to disappoint. Are we allowed to say that we've done a five show deal? Yeah, we haven't put pen to paper, but that's what we're no, hoping I'm here for, for, isn't it? For five in total. Five in four total. from four from this one on. Onwards no. from this yeah, one will be four. Yeah. So we're very excited that you are now part of the furniture. Part Do you feel cu- you've, you've assumed the throne? Yeah, which I is would the rather have sat in that seat because it went well when I was in that seat, and now Tins isn't here. See, it's got nothing to do with it. Superstition. Yeah. You get no, no. better when you sit. Yeah, in that you're seat. better. Yeah. Do you believe in the you butterfly get a effect? No, yes. you don't. You get a princess. You get a castle sitting in that seat. Yeah, a butterfly's wing halfway across the world can cause a tornado somewhere else. I'm all over that. Yeah, but that's just life, life decisions, isn't yes. it? If you turn left onto the tube as opposed to right on the tube. Yeah. I mean, Tins is going to be a little bit upset that you've got a hemorrhoid on his seat. I, I, <laughs> I imagine I, that's, no. that's talking about a butterfly's wing. <laughs> Your butterfly's fucking pile wing. staining up his <laughs> executive throne. When, yeah. When you say to Tins, oh, by the way, we saw Johnny's pile, I'd be like, <laughs> I didn't know he had a big country house <laughs> in, the, uh, in Gloucestershire. <laughs> no, He's no, no. It's, on one that, it's one that seeped through your canvas seat. No, that's it's enough, fine Jones. at the moment. Some reflections and reaction to our first show with Johnny May. Five stars, said Lawrence Santa. Best episode ever, even. Long-time listener, first-time commenter. Thank you for creating such a safe and still fun space for a fellow neurodivergent chicken. 
The respect you have for Johnny May is evident. I think it was your best show yet. Although it was chaos and wouldn't have worked with other guests, it did so well with Johnny. What a character. He must have been so much fun and such an inspirational person to play alongside. <laughs> thank you for all you have done for England Rugby. Great show as That's well. That's very kind. Thank yeah. you, that Santa. Nice. Give us a little flavour of, of the feedback to show one because we have been inundated. Please make Johnny a permanent part of the team. He's pure gold. One of the best episodes yet. Great character and great insights. And nice to hear the team made the joke of the media attacks and used them as fuel. Please bring Johnny back for another episode. <laughs> wow, just wow. Wow, just wow. Yeah, wow, just wow. <laughs> wow, just wow. For me, this is the best episode yet quite by quite some distance. Pure chaos with absolute gold. Bring Johnny back. This has kept me gripped the whole episode. Absolute chaos. Brilliant. Imagine Johnny and Marla both in the show at the same time. Or, or Marla don't. wants to come on. Does he? Does yeah. he? I'm what, not sure you? I can handle that. I could, I could just about do one at a well, time. He wouldn't fit on that sofa, with you? No. Well, I can move up. We're right. Too, yeah. Yeah, too big Where will Tins go? Let's make it happen. We, we don't need Tins all the time. Australia. No, we yeah. don't need him. No, no, not, well, don't, we don't want to say we don't need him. My God, rugby yeah. needs to let personalities be free and the sport will grow. I've watched Johnny Casually as a Welshman for 15 years. I did not know he was sitting on this fantastic personality. I love it, Johnny. Give us... Give, no, that's all very, very kind. Thank you very much for everybody who's... Um, given positive feedback, it's very it? nice. No, I did. I did enjoy it. It was a good laugh. Like it's quite a nice life. You get on a train, first class. Thank you. That's all right. It's nice. Uh, what's the station called? That I've Padding is it Paddington? Yes, yeah, Paddington. Paddington Pret. I like Pret. And a taxi <laughs> to the thing. It's just a nice day. It's different to like a a gym and a. And, a, a, sword, and, right? and, a, and then a contact session Poking in the rain. Hopefully pile back in and put your recovery pants <laughs> yeah. on. So no, it was a different type of day for me, but I did enjoy it. And thank you for all the for all the positive feedback. Um, even my father-in-law enjoyed it. Can I did give you? him a shout out? Please yeah. do. This is your Andrew, show now, Johnny. Um, I know you're not my biggest fan, but... Um, <laughs> Trust I me, am, you're one up on someone else. Yeah, 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 I'm really pleased that you enjoyed the episode. <laughs> I actually gave him the black eye gin. Um, did so you? I did he enjoy the tipple? Um, Why yeah. is he not your biggest fan? There's a few things I've done. Um, like what? Can you like off the top of your head? Off the latest one is I don't wear trousers. Right. Is that because of the pile? In what, in what would you no, mean? No, not because of the pile. I, like, <laughs> uh, of a Sunday dinner, I should. I, it's news to me as of recently, but I should wear a pair of trousers to dinner. Hold on. But you're wearing, you're wearing, you're wearing, you're wearing, I'm wearing shorts uh, or, or tracksuit oh, bottoms. Oh, fine. Right. Okay. The other ones were... I think that's. I think that is. I think he's got a point. Yeah, the other I'm on the other side. I think Sunday lunch in, in... If you've been invited over today as for Sunday lunch and you're turning up in, in just a pair of shorts, well, what kind yeah. of shorts are we talking Just my basketball shorts. Yeah, that's not, oh, that's that's not probably, good. Yeah, I'd probably say you have but to wear just some It's just me, sort of isn't it? I'm normally in my Birkenstocks I, and, my, and, and, my, and my tracksuit bottoms. But anyway, I did make the effort to put some trousers on over Christmas, but then I had diarrhoea, so I had to lie in bed for two oh days. Oh, my God. Almighty. You and your did bowels. We get any, like, um, did we get anything for that, for Johnny? Is the chemist... <laughs> is there, can we, we get a bucket to go global 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 it? Um, it? What else? I stacked the straw wrong. Um, the straw? Yeah, so their main their main yield crop, their speciality is the thatching straw. Not many people do that still. Oh, they really? farmers then? Yes. Right, okay. um, so then, it, like, basically manually, you've got to stack the straw. And yeah. he showed me how to do it. And I thought I could do it differently. And all my work fell down. So that had to be restacked. Right. So I can um, imagine, imagine coming over Christmas. He shat everywhere. Had to lay in bed. And he's fucked up your straw. It's your biggest earner. And then and he's turned up with a pair of fucking bars. There's, there's another, there's another couple of things. What, oh, we had the wedding at their field. But anyway, I don't drink very often, but I got drunk at my wedding and I pissed in the pond right. and they're convinced it killed all the fish. <laughs> yeah. I, Does that yeah. kill fish? Yeah, all them supplements you take and all that stuff. Um, the fish died. Um, I rode the quad bike on the garden. And there's been a few no things. No wonder he hates you. Why does he love you, though? Yeah. The, the, he loved the podcast, sat oh, there, watched okay. it all, enjoyed it, and he's got a bottle of Black Eyed Gin. Do you think we have helped him understand you better. Maybe it's a step in the right direction. I hope so. I, just want, I want to just take, pick up with one point here, the bit where it said, the part about the inspirational person bit, mm. I'm going to just put my hand up and say, I, I loved playing with you and like mm. you were a top man. I, I never thought you were inspirational. I That's thought you were fine. a fucking lunatic. That's fine. That, 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 um, but you're quite comfortable with that as a kind of job Whatever, spec, yeah. yeah. We've all, like, it, it, with any team, you need different ingredients, don't you? And then like the ultimate team aligns the ingredients correctly and you get the best output. Um, but there's no recipe for the best team because if you had a recipe, everybody would be able to create the but best team. Yeah. I saw a very interesting clip online this week, actually, which was Stuart Broad talking about Basball. Yeah. And he said, with Basball, everything that Brendan McCullum and Ben Stokes wanted from the team was just positivity. You had to be positive when you entered the team room. Stuart Broad said, my natural inclination is to walk in and moan because that's what I do. But he had to condition himself to get into the mindset that when he walked into the team room, he would start with a... 
God, wasn't the coffee good at the hotel today or whatever it was? And he'd just try and throw in lines, which means you come in it yeah. with a bit of sunshine and you're trying to inspire those around you. And from there, Basball obviously goes on. Mm. Is there anyone in this England setup who provides that, or is it just 23, 30, 34 Sappuccinos who I think just the British cult, I think like there's negative which is negative, and there's negative that is positive. Yeah. Like right. if we can laugh about things and take a joke out of things, that's a net positive. Yeah. But if we're going to talk, oh, the coach is crap in the way, yes. like that's negative, negative. But there so, are so, so you've got you've got positive. Yes. You've got negative positive. Yes. And negative, and ne negative, negative. Yes. yes, correct. Split that. G give me a percentage of this England um, squad. Pure positivity. No, there is a few. Like there are people who love life in camp. I.e. Like ben Earl, Jamie George, Elliot Daly, Danny Kerr, for instance. They they are they're full of beans. Like. Um, life's their oyster. Is that the word? Yeah. word? Yeah, we'll go with it. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, go with the world's it. their oyster. Yeah. Whatever you want. Whatever like, that well, means. Yeah. But it means Johnny like May, they're up want, for mate. golf, they're, they're up just for oysters. dinner, like they're loving it and yeah. having a good... Like there are very positive people. There are um, some negative, positive people. Um, and then there probably are some grumpy by nature people. Um, but on the on whole, on it? the whole, yeah, on the whole, it's a, good, it's a really good group. Where are you? Um, I like to try and be positive and then yeah. also make a joke out of some of the negatives. So yeah. net, I'd love to think I'm positive. Right. Hask? I'm negative he's, positive. he's a negative yeah, positive. Negative. Remember that. Like net is a positive. I sit down like this, oh, kind of fucked. And then you just see like <laughs> Johnny wandering aimless around with like one flip flop, <laughs> one boot, one boot, <laughs> missing a hat. All right, Johnny, oh, has anyone seen my trousers? Has anyone seen my belt? <laughs> right, lads, just an announcement. Whoever turned my bed over and covered it in water, that's like the eighth time today. And I, 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 you sit back and go, I can't help you. I don't want to get involved. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get involved. But, you know, my life isn't as bad as that. And then I just carry on. So, I, you know, I quite enjoy it. And also, you would, you would take the piss out of everything. But you did that presentation, didn't you, after the 2015? <laughs> Yeah. Which went down interestingly. Yeah. Well, it went down unbelievably well, but apart from the people that so I, I did a presentation in 2015, they were like, Andy Farrell said, could you do like some awards? Um, you know, uh, to hand out to like bottles of wine for people and <laughs> and I went, Well what do you mean? You, you know, can I just be me? And he went, Yeah, absolutely be you. And it was things like I handed out a guy called Matt Parker who was um lovely guy. But he, um, you know, he, he came up with all these figures and stuff. And when we first started the tour, there was like, you know, we're going to train at 125 percent of our of our maximum. And by the time we get to the World Cup, we're going to be pinging. And we, you know, we, we did 8,000 quatrons better than the 2,000 <laughs> we've done before. And all these like flames and charts, just utter bollocks, right? <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I did a presentation. Obviously, we also got knocked out. And I and I basically went, look, Matt, with all those figures, it's going to lead to one place, one place only. And I superimposed his face on a job centre. It was really funny, but just like 12 months too soon. That's, <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? That's yeah. negative, negative. No, no, negative no it, positive. Was, it was negative, positive, but just probably it was, it was fragile. Too soon. Do you know what I do want to get into with Johnny is that one of the really interesting things that fell out of our first show was actually how inspirational you are. Well, that's kind. It is kind. Fellas, love the show. My 15-year-old son is on a spectrum. He plays school and club rugby, but rarely watches rugby on TV. We listened to your latest show together and howled with laughter and joy. It's the best rugby podcast I've ever listened to. Unscripted, hilarious, and hugely engaging. So it's quite a lot of backpatting here. This is mainly for you rather than us, but <laughs> yeah. a safe, we get a lot of crap normally. A safe space where Johnny could just be Johnny. You guys uh, got the band just perfect. And as I said, my son was roaring it's with like laughter. It's like a therapy session, yeah, isn't it? We could so easily relate to so easy to Johnny's stories, his anxiety and life experiences. Well done. Best we always, I always felt like I'd give you a safe space to express yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just Johnny being Johnny, isn't it? Um, is it? Is this... Because you were quite interesting on that show, although very fleetingly, but you said, I've never, ever put myself out there because I never really wanted to. No, I wouldn't have wanted, like, I wouldn't wanted to. I think, like, I don't know. It's partly... It is partly how we're trained media. Yeah. Um, don't say anything that can come back to get you or... Always make it about the team. You've parked They've that in the last half an hour for sure. Pardon? You've parked that. In yeah, the for last now half I have, yeah. so I don't need to be worried about, about that it. anymore. But no, when you're preparing for a test match, let's say if you're playing Wales or something in the week, the, the typical question would be like, is there any revenge or do you hate them as much as you hate us? And I think it, like you just wouldn't want to be on the back page. That, like, of course, when we go to the Millennium or whatever, that they're all their all their um, fans are flicking their fingers at you, and uh, yeah, we want to get them. You say something like that, and it, all you are is just more attention on the back page. And you, like, why would why, you? Why are the players so worried about that? Well, why uh, uh, maybe, maybe this next generation has probably grown up with it more, and they're more comfortable doing that. And hopefully, we will see more personalities come out. But certainly, the stress of getting through the week with yeah. people nicking my sandals, um, <laughs> and then Every, having nicked everything, and then having to play a test match at the end of the week, <laughs> like. I, I, I was on the edge. Like, if I forgot my gum shield, that was enough to tip me over the edge. Let alone. 
um, being on the back page of a paper. Well, like I didn't to stop running when you like got into the, I the try zone. This Casio, I actually, um, I started the. Um, we played New Zealand in the autumn. We got about 20 minutes in, and I I was like, oh shit, I'm still wearing my Casio. I was like, well, what the fuck do I do with it? I can't just throw it on. I put it in my sock because like the way it works is like you give the physio or the water man the watch. Eddie's like, what's going on, mate? And they, oh, Johnny, Johnny's just given me. A, he would Eddie would have been like, well, get what? Where's his head at? Like I was worried what Eddie would think that I started and played 20 minutes of a test match with the Casio on. Um, so I just tucked it in my sock and didn't tell anybody. I just put it in my bag at half time. Right. Is that, Why do you keep referring to it as a Casio? It's just a watch, but. but. It's like, it's, it's, it's like a brand name. No, no, no. There's no. There's no um, He's man of the people. There's no sponsorship here. It's Why just a good you just watch. Why did you leave it on? You can't. It's probably going to cut somebody or get me in trouble or right. anything. But anyway, yeah. It basically, is I wouldn't wanted to have put myself out there because I just didn't want to be talked about or be any like good or bad or anything. Just it's just stress, isn't it? Yeah. It, 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 if that makes sense. Yeah. You don't. I, I, after last. After last show. What was your the further you got away from the building, what level of anxiety, what you'd feared that you'd said, got into your head? Yeah, there was. That's why George is here today yeah. because wonderful, um, beautiful George that you can't yeah, see. You can't He's see now, it, Johnny's yeah. basically now got a carer. So we're, we're, we're not yeah. paying for her to be here, but out of his own pocket, he's basically got a carer. Uh, I've just see, I've just seen her writing down a lot of time codes and yeah. drawing lines mm. through things <laughs> yeah. so far. Yeah. We've done yeah. two and a half hours of recording to yeah. get to this point. Yeah. Just yeah. five FYI. minutes. Yeah. yeah, but no, that, obviously this is a bit different and new for me. I never thought I'd be doing it, but right. I'm at the stage of my life and career where I need to start exploring doing other things. Yeah, you yep. do, yeah. Uh, definitely do. Snack and straw, <laughs> snack and straw ain't good. <laughs> no. I would, yeah, fashion ain't going to cut uh, it. No, so I need to try new things. And I did, like I said, the train's quite nice. I like Pret. The train. Can I, I, another inspirational question. If you went back in time, this was the question from Di Stanley Butt, and it's our continental question of the week. If you went back in time and met a 13 year old Johnny May, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, geez. Um, I mean, I wouldn't, I have no regrets and I wouldn't want to change anything, but there are certainly times where I've been too anxious and too stressed or too down about things. Um, but can you change that without? change in the output because it's those times potentially where you're down and anxious that like make you do your stretching or make you go do your extra sprints or yeah. can you do you see what i mean so it's a difficult um scale to balance um but of course yeah you, you look back and think blood vim and hell things that were really important i've just had a baby son and like things that maybe were really important maybe you realize oh, okay that didn't matter so much but when you're living it and you're it's everything to you and it, and it still is very important to me um it's, it's the fact that you care that makes you want to get better and, and, and it makes you harden yourself. And what has been the best, I'm going to call it coping mechanism, but what has been the best way that you've found to get rid of whatever levels of anxiety yeah, you've got? Yeah, I just get lost in the routine of it. Do you? So, like, so you stick to a, yeah, yeah, what you know? No, just like the, the harder I can work and if if I'm stressed about this, right, what can I go do about it? Do I go watch a bit of footage? Do I write in my book? Do I go do some stretching? Do I go do my recovery? Do I get lost in my loop of, of 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 x y and z do i do my extras do i so so that's how i coped is as i just got lost in my preparation i was gonna say because actually ellis has been very open in the past about his dyspraxia etc we, we live in an era where everybody's yeah. looking for a label of some sort yes. and yet you're not that interested in that you are who you are yeah it exactly really i think i think you. people want a reason or an excuse maybe to say why i'm not good at something or parents particularly oh my son my son struggles with this because he's got this label when the reality is everybody's on a spectrum of some people are more sociable, some people are quieter, some people have more confidence, some don't, some people are better at drawing, some people are better at reading, some people are good at maths. And and today's society, particularly in America, with like big pharma going in and mind that down my conspiracy route now, but like if a kid can't really pay attention, he's active and he's bored, they need to put him on amphetamines to say he's got ADHD when really he's just a young boy full of Working beans and he, he's probably bored with what they're teaching him at school. So um no, every, like everybody's, like I said earlier about everybody being a different personality, I can embrace that um, I probably do have slightly different personality to, to a lot of my teammates, but that's a cool thing. And I think you need, that's a great thing about our game is that it, it, it celebrates and needs different body shapes, sizes, personalities, everything. And, and like I said, you're, you're looking for the combination of, of people to bring about a, a good game of rugby. It, it is true as well. People are always looking for, for labels. I've said this a number of times, but actually the labeling, is only the the start of it. It's not a get out of jail free. No. Or it's not a. It's not a. If you if you if you've got something, that's actually where it begins. So it, I think people sometimes go, oh well, I've got that, and that's it. No, that you got that, and this is how you work with it. And actually, you can't then just hide behind it. I think if you've got an issue, 
or you've got there's you're different and people are different you know i mean i i, I did this interview with the, the independent i've somehow accidentally become sort of a face of this of ADHD, you know, I, I got diagnosed when I was eight before anybody had it or they were self-diagnosing on, on TikTok. They put me on medication. I couldn't take any more medication because I was um, getting drug tested. Um, it taught me to concentrate a little bit more. It's been my superpower to allow me to do lots of different things. I, you know, I'm sure it's, I'm a nightmare to be be with or work with or whatever, but actually it's not held me back. I've never used it as a crutch, never spoken about it. But, you know, it kind of... A lot of people now are looking, especially parents watching these programs. And when I did it, people were going, oh, my kid's got this. My kid's, it sort of doesn't matter what they've got. It's sort of now, and how do you then manage it? And what do you find to unlock their talent? And what, what are you going to do to to start the journey and learn more about it and move forward? Because it's just not the answer, you know? It's the question. Jude Colbrook wanted us to go back to a number of unanswered stories from episode one. There are a number of items you put on the list that we didn't cover. Tom, what have you been doing? <laughs> Can we hear the chicken story? What were the antics of the England team during the 2020 COVID Six Nations? Tell us about yeah. the pits. Ben Teo's exit from the England team in 2019. Fine, fine, thank you. And the post-match song. We'll do, maybe we'll do that live one No, day. we don't do that because although it's an era and um, landscape now, of more access, more access, which is like we just discussed, we want more people to come out and show their personalities, etc. For me and my reflections are that the changing room is a sacred place for Agreed. the team. Would you like to, could, any more you can share about the pits? Oh, the pits is basically the the changing rooms at Gloucester are appalling. Right. And certainly before the revamp of them when we were at Hartbury and they got nicknamed the pits by the likes of the, the era of people that I came through with that molded me slightly but we had a great time andy hazel yeah andy hazel luke narraway will james mike tyndall jameson like the, what a, we're so so fortunate to have such an amazing group and that was some of the best days playing for gloucester with that team but th they were so appallingly made and ventilated and cleaned that like this virus um we don't really know what it was it was like a black ring because about 10 years ago this virus it's not covid no it wasn't COVID, it was a black pits. circle so it wasn't right. ringworm but like this black circle appeared. <laughs> You're telling a, me that in, in the changing rooms, the black death is created in the pits. Yeah, so this the black, black ring, circle. this black ring would appear when we we're like, oh no, it's got you. And what would um, it do to you? I, I, it was just a black ring. I don't think it's you not was a well. It was a black ring. It was a living. It was a living. It was a living entity. Um, what like like venom from Spider-Man? But anyway, oh, where did the black ring appear? But anyway, it's called the pits because it was so minging. Then this bug comes along. But we all had to go for testing, and then you were categorised as like um, symptomatic carriers, carriers or not infected. So like Charlie Sharples, he loves getting this a is an on actual this. thing. This happened, yeah. Charlie Sharples was a carrier, but no symptoms of the black ring. Of the black ring, I had nothing, thank God. And then like a handful of people had this black ring, like, right, on their leg, on their chest, on their oh, side. So, yeah, okay, yeah. Like yeah. it's just pretty rank, isn't it? That's yeah, definitely well, it an, is. it's uh, definitely an RPA matter. Right. So you're so due to unhygienic conditions you created a bacterial slash virus it's like it's like known COVID. To medical it science. wasn't made in wuhan um no, meat market no. it was made in the gloucester change rooms the black ring right and what does the black ring do to you just leaves your black ring or does it like it leg a, fall uh, off I, I know darren daviduke had it i mean i can send a couple of messages i don't know what the black ring did but it wasn't it's pretty rank isn't it well That's i mean it depends it could be a bit of a fashion statement i've got the old black ring but if it lets your leg falls off and starts decaying it wasn't good it was uh, it wasn't, wasn't news good. it was just a ring but it wasn't ring. it was rank um, and it's certainly not good. Um, okay. Well, not good well, standards. You, I've had ringworm before from, from training it. That's um, when the bastards knit your towel, isn't it? The filthy ones. They knit your towel, no, you show yeah, your towel, no, you get a ringworm. Uh, my, my, my sort of MMA gym is kind of rife on the mat. You've got a ringworm? You get, you get, you get a ring on your arm. That, yeah, that's yeah. like probably, yeah, like it's not great. Sp scrum pox. Yeah, scrum pox. What's that? Oh, like that's around the head, isn't it? Fat front row people get Yeah, when they rub. Rub, yeah. I don't know. It's like, yeah, and they get, it's like, I don't know. Lesions, Pretty. not not lesions, not lesions. Carbuncles and uh, <laughs> <laughs> carbuncles and, and pustules. Um, no. Ben Tio's exit from the England team in 2019. Anything oh, you'd like to share oh, on I've that? Got, is this? Is yes, this? I, don't, I haven't heard the story. Am I properly. selling my soul now? Yes, you have. Yeah. yeah. You oh, have, you've got, you've got, you've got, welcome to the dark you've side. Got side. Oh, oh, well, so here, want, here are the two questions. I will, never wanted this for myself. Will, will Ben Tio <laughs> mind you telling the story? No, Ben Tio, not so much. Will Mike Brown mind? Potentially. Well, Mike Brown actually sold the story to the Sun, didn't he? To 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 clear it up, didn't you? Do you remember during the World Cup period? Um, no, but it's a shame. It. It's a shame for both players yeah. who have probably gone on no, the World I mean, Cup. I, I just mean he did his story. He came out and spoke. So, he's so basically, we go, we go to we get a social. In, were you in Portugal? Uh, Italy. Italy. So we were in Treviso. We went on a social 
I've got another good story about the security, Bill and Ferg, who are useless okay. at England, and they won't mind me talking about them. I'm happy to talk about them. It involves Ed Sheeran uh, okay. after the World Cup final. Can I go to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> You've done bloody well, actually, Johnny. Can we just actually acknowledge, acknowledge how well you've done? And he has lost his voice. Go do the stop. Go on, then. That's it. Stretch out. Do you want to have a little lie down? Uh, Ice cream? Have you soiled yourself in those big trousers? No. You take your time. There's no hurry. It's quite something. What is quite evident is that you ne he, he's like a sort of power source. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, we, we've had a lot of people on this set before, but no one has had quite such a 360 kind of... W wherever you go, something's happening. Yes, Which, yeah. Whichever part of his life you talk about, there's a disaster, a catastrophe, a yeah, win, yeah. something to celebrate. I, yeah. I've never... All amongst it, a really professional sweet, sweet. Like, Chloe absolutely adores him. Yeah. She's a, she's, he's the, for, he, for her, she, he is the most fascinating person I've yes. ever played with. You just, uh, like, just sitting there asking questions, the way his mind works, what he thinks about, you know, how he interprets stuff. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah. And he's actually, very, he's interesting. He's very intelligent and just shrewd operator. He's not, he's not stupid, but I, I, I always like to go on with Johnny, but he, cause he was always with Joe Marler, always with the lads. There was always someone stealing something or doing something to him or something had happened. Or, and, I, and I was like, I haven't got time for this in my life. Do you know what I mean? Cause if you start involved in that, if you start messing around, suddenly your stuff starts going missing. And then, you know, and then you're in a world of pain. Then you're the vortex. And then, yeah, and then you're a vortex. So he takes revenge, they take revenge on him. And then, you know, and then things like, <laughs> we just ran straight into the golf cart, you know, cause you forgot to stop. There's just stuff like that, it's just amazing. He's back. He's back. We'll do, um, you, you need the microphone. Yeah, we'll do, um, we'll do the Ben Tio and we'll do the Bill and Ferg security, and then we'll just maybe draw, draw breath, draw yeah. breath. Draw That's enough for this week. Let's do Ben Tio and Mike Brown. Okay, so we're in Treviso. We've trained really hard. Everything's going pretty well. We go on a team. It's not the. It's not like the the most. Int well, I guess the viewers and what is our demographic? Who are we going after with this? Not sure. Well, we it's your, 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 your father-in-law, your general, mother, apparently. Yeah, but th general these are new. These fans. are new people. They wasn't. They wouldn't have traditionally watched it. Oh, well, they, what? They just came He's, on because you came. Oh yeah, certainly. Have they, have they clicked like and subscribe and share? Well, he wouldn't know how to do that. Well, could you help oh, him with oh. that? Every so uh, what, he's, he's a simple twice. farmer, is he? <laughs> yeah. Um. It's a f I find this one quite funny. My mother-in-law went on like a computer course, and like she knows how to close a window because you kiss it goodbye oh that's lovely oh, that's good you kiss that's it absolutely goodbye lovely. yeah i like that very much yeah they, yeah. they teach you non-technological things as well like. from farm life so like if you've got eggs that that says they're past your sell by date if you put them in a like they are like, i had some put in water I, yeah they and if they float they're off and if yeah. they sink so that could that's be good for demographic if i'm thinking of like student rugby players yes eggs are good for breakfast you might have some out of date eggs so what you you're saying is we could tap into a whole new audience of cretin students who didn't know <laughs> no, about I, eating I eggs. suspect they might like listening or watching yeah so if they've We're got eggs that are over the date if they go in a glass of water and they sink you're fine to eat them wow you, i thought you had that they had to float no yeah, float, float is off they, they float, float off because you've got air in them basically right. they, would have, they would have fermented oh. bacteria it's something for everybody mm -hmm. bentio yeah so yeah it's quite a quick story. We went out, got well. I I never eat. Really, I wasn't comfortable, and a few of us aren't getting too drunk on these England things because you're still representing England and you're still at work. Who but else is in sober club? No, it's not sober. It's like have a couple or because or one avoid. time you did get drunk, the toilet got destroyed. Remember? Oh yeah, do we, is that? An, no, yeah, you, that well, did. I, I tell that story in my own stand, my stand up tour. But so that's well, in, Johnny, in Italy. Johnny, you know, you know, you got the, uh, your, I got your, invoice your debut, for that. Your debut. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was my drink, second it, debut. Second debut. The second debut. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, have, apparently why? the first one didn't count. <laughs> right. Um, why were you allowed to? As such, someone's bullied you into it. I've already done mine. Shut fuck up, Johnny. Yeah, shut up and have a drink. So yeah, I'm forced to drink anyway. We've got we we do three three stories. The Italy one. How quickly they clock, clock I out. know. Um, so much to drink. Anyway, you've got to have a drink with every member of the team. Right. Uh, you don't manage to do it, but you have a lot. Anyway, I go into the toilet to be sick. Yeah. Biddy Twelve Trees locks me in the toilet. For your own safety? Or for How did he do that from the outside? I can't with even... With a key. We must have know. a key or screen. I or maybe you thought you were locked in. You no, wouldn't. no. He barred me shut, so I couldn't get out. So I was like, oh, okay. I know what to do. But anyway, we're in this really historic, lovely, mosaic -y building and they right at the end of the six nations like you do, do in the past pre-covid you would do a bit like brass band like yeah, trays, band and trays and food, and, food yeah. and black tie and it is a good event that they put like they're very hospitable is Not that like the spirit word rug with some stuffy old bloke and a bit of chicken you but know, no it, it was amazing like, um, i'm like far as you can see volivons yeah, you know, so salamis, yeah so anyway i was meats. sick biddy 12 trees blocks me from getting out so i was like oh no issue i'll just stand on the toilet jump over the cube we'll come out the next one i stand on the toilet push this like old vat like china 
toilet smashes, breaks, splits in half, and water starts pissing out the fucking um, out of one of the pipes. And Billy opened it and like caught me red-handed, like halfway up the thing. He's like, "What have you done?" And I'm like, "I didn't fucking do anything." It's like you've stopped me from getting. And anyway, we we both just walk out of there, like. Guilty is very, looking very guilty about it. Covered in shit water. Covered in shit water. No, no, no. Like, in shit in water. <laughs> no but like, a bit of toilet paper like, stuck like, to your face. Like, I'd messed up. Like, Billy made me mess up. Obviously, <laughs> Billy I. Made Billy me, made yeah. me. Yeah, yeah well, Billy if you trap somebody in the toilet, what are we meant to do? Not trying to escape. But anyway, we go back and sit at our tables. And anyway, within minutes, the police are like racing in a line through the thing um, because it's like um, protected. Um, historical. It's like a, a really nice building. And, and, I, and anyway, we. Lanny and you just, broke this on your second debut for England. Right, it's the end of the Six Nations, so what's that, my sixth cap? But yeah, yeah um, that toilet broke. Lanny was like, Lanny, was like you broke a Lanny, you go to, Lanny told me to go to bed. I had to go to bed. This has turned into quite a therapy session. It is therapy. Of the trauma of playing for England. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Is, is essentially so what we're going through. So you have to apologise to Italians, right? Yeah, apologise to Italians, yeah. pay the money, say I was sorry. A it thousand wasn't pounds for a toilet. thousand six hundred sixty six sixty p. 66. Can you put that? Can you offset that against tax loss of some sort? Tax bill of some sort? No. Keep international okay. crime. Corporate loss. Okay, international crime. Um, you got away with it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that happened. Anyway, that's that. Ben's here. Mike Brown. We're in Treviso. We're getting drunk. Like I said, there's there's always a, a few people who you have to be concerned about on those socials. There's less of them around now. Um, like Dicky would be a concern. Billy. And do you man mark? Concerns, yeah, we tried. We tried to help. We tried to help, but also stay away. Right. It's a fine balance. So help from a distance. <laughs> Helping with a pool, like a, like a pool cue, like poking them. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Put that down. Um, yeah. Ben Teo got too drunk. Like it happened. I, th um, like I don't know. I don't know how I've got into this. I sat here telling these well, stories. Well, because we put it on the list from show one, but never got into yeah, it. We don't have to go. So into anyway, it. to my understanding, like. Apologies to anybody who I mentioned who didn't want to be mentioned. Yeah. And we might not even show this anyway. But I think, Joe, like where the joke you play when like you pretend there's a fly on you and you slap somebody. I haven't played that since or uh, about it's, it's not a game that you might have yeah, played but, or not. But yeah. that, that occurred and I think Brownie got slapped. Right. Um, I might have been marrowed at it. But anyway, Ben's here being too drunk found it. And obviously Brownie was ang Brownie wouldn't have been drinking. He was very, like really professional guy. Yeah. Didn't didn't do all that. He's always that's why he's still playing and he's just still in great shape. Like, like all those things. Um, so obviously Brownie wasn't like in that mood at that time and didn't take well to it, understandably. But then Ben's here probably got carried away with the reaction that he got and probably slapped him a couple more times. Um, and then like we any, anyway we've we've. Somehow, like, Bill and Ferg, we'll talk about them in a minute, obviously just standing around, not doing much at all, just watching them saying, oh, the boys have got to look at, like, we don't do any, not re I don't really know what they do, but they were there. Um, we'd, we'd almost navigated as a team our way through all potential things that could go wrong. They hadn't, and it was on the walk back to the bus. Um, Brownie was walking to the bus, and they were sort of yelling stuff to each other about something, and then, yeah, they turned around and, like, I think uh, Benny landed a punch on Brownie and like got him, got him with his, his he had a black eye and Ben Teo had a ripped shirt. And and then we got on the bus and it was all kicking off. It was like a, it was awful really. Like lots of boys were calling out boys. Some boys were crying. <laughs> um, it was bizarre. And then we were like. Sounds like a lesser away trip. It was just so weird. And then, then lads were like, right, we need to sort all this out. There's a team and go down to the basement now. And then other lads are like, this is the worst time to go and sort things out. Um, and it was just... Well, you like a fight club or something? No, like not like a fight club. It was just... Um, it, this is the time that during this World Cup, Eddie had had us with this... Um, Honesty woman. And she'd stoked a few feathers within camp. Like oh, yeah, she was one who encouraged you to have, or yeah. to, to, have a, to have difficult conversations. Yeah, like, so to sit it was, down and go, I, I things, hate you. Things <laughs> were, yeah, honestly, <laughs> things were brewing because like we had to go and tell people like things we didn't like. Like, like it was really weird. She made who, people who did cry. You, who, did you, who came to you? I, nobody came to me, That's but there nice. was. I'm not going to say who and what, but there was uh, there was cues for the same. Didn't like, someone got Cipriano had a queue like round the block, <laughs> wasn't it? Some, there was all that, anyway. People were having conversations that didn't need to be have and forcing them. And up, there was so <laughs> much. Imagine tins. I just oh, don't like it. I don't like your house. You're prick. Yeah. You're loud. What? But was anyway, there was there was stuff simmering, um, and then that sort of tips it all off. And then I think Steve Borthwick had to go and wake up Ben Teo in the morning, the next morning, and Ben Teo's like on the bus like st he was still steaming on the bus to the airport like Steve Borthwick was in my room in the morning why is Steve Borthwick in my room that's my Aussie accent he's yeah. like yeah he come to wake you up 
but he was just so drunk. And then the bu- the bus was awkward. And then at the front, Eddie stood up and he was like, right, boys, you fucked up. Um, you can't handle your piss. And um, then like off the back of that, uh, Brownie and Tio got removed Pinted. from the um, removed from the camp. And that was it. Well, I I think I need therapy to yeah. get. It's just a shame for like it's a shame for both of them that yeah. they like maybe that's just something. In my opinion, maybe that's just something that happens. Um, D- does this and it's kind a shame. Of thing, does it happen at Gloucester as well? Do you have proper terrace? We have rip into no. We have quite like we do train Tuesdays. There's like maybe more so than other clubs, but we do fight quite like not we the forwards will f- <laughs> will fight quite a lot on a. On a Tuesday, yeah. Now they've lost happens. nine games on the trot. I imagine there'll be more fighting. Mm. Well, I'm glad we've put that one to bed. Should we, we go Bill and Ferg really quickly? Give us Bill and Ferg. And so Bill and, and Ferg's excellent <laughs> adventure. Um, so anyway, World Cup final 2019. We lose. We get back to the hotel. We've got like the penthouse of a hotel somewhere. I actually did have a few drinks and felt quite drunk quite quickly. Probably because of the stress of it all. Um, but it's a weird environment. Anyway... Some people know, some people don't know, but Ed Sheeran is like a family friend of of ours, of mine. Stop it. Um, and it, it, what's, what's, is there not a connection? His mum talking no, about it. My mum. So like my my mum is friend, close friends with his dad. Right. My mum's best friends, his godmother. Like they're like they're in a network of friends. So when yeah. we were like kids, if the parents got together, we'd play football with each other. But Ed would obviously be inside playing guitar because that's what he liked to do. Um, so you basically say he's a fucking nerd and you were, you were the athletic one, so you saying? No, oh. just said he was inside playing guitar. Oh. Um, he's done all right off the back of it. So, so, I, I wish I was, uh, if I had one inch of his talent. So I'd anyway, I think he was, his family are musical. He's quite classically trained. Um, he, my mum and dad play guitar and stuff and he saw my mum playing guitar and apparently so. My mum, he was interested. He was interested. My mum taught him a, taught him some chords and off he went. So apparently that so is... So talented, man. Fuck apparently that happened. Can you um, imagine in a parallel universe if he'd gone out to play football and you'd, you'd picked up your yeah. mum's guitar? Yeah. You wouldn't be here now. No. You'd have so Are you much. musical? I've done the drums. My family's a bit musical. Really? Um, but no, anyway. So, penthouse of a Japanese hotel. All the friends and families are coming in. It's a bit of a weird vibe. People are getting drunk. Some people are... Up, most people are upset. It's all a lot to take in. Ed Sheeran's dad was with my mum, and they were both steaming, like they'd been drinking all day. Um, like to get, no, not, you're not like related to Ed Sheeran, right? No. Oh, right. It's not um, the that we're, you're not really his brother? <laughs> no. But yeah. anyway, my mum and dad, my dad doesn't drink. My mum used to drink a lot. She doesn't drink at all anymore. But she was, um, she'd had a few drinks. Ed Sheeran's dad had a few drinks. And then my mum's like, oh, well, Ed's, Ed was at the final, and he wants to see his dad. And I was like, oh, okay, well but like I'll, I'll go and let him in or whatever like i haven't seen him for a long time um but like the sadness of it is ed is literally so famous that like he doesn't get to see his dad very often he's got to do this appearance and go here and be there um, and his dad was like yeah i'd love to see her could you get him in and i'd obviously you, you <laughs> at these post rugby match um events you get wristbands um so i'd obviously given wristbands you probably got three each let's say so my mum and dad and or oh, I got five. My mum, dad, Ed Sheeran's dad, my brother-in-law and his mate were out there. They got wristbands. They were up in the bar with us. So anyway, I go out. Up comes the elevator. Ed Sheeran with his entourage of two, his wife, Cherry, and his mate. And um, I walk to the door. I'm like, oh, I was going to take Ed to see his dad. And Bill and Fergus stood at the rope. They're like, I was like, yeah, sorry, it's Ed Sheeran here. Um, he wants to come and see his dad. And Ferg, this like stubborn Scottish security, is like, I'm not going to do a Scottish accent, but he's like, yeah, well, where's his wristband? I'm like, Ferg, are you taking the fucking piss? This is Ed Sheeran, and he wants to see his dad. He doesn't need a fucking wristband to go and see his dad. He's like, this is what he said. He was like, well, I've just turned Piers Francis' mates around because they didn't have a wristband. <laughs> oh, Lord. I was like, Ferg, fucking hell, mate. Piers, like, n- n- nothing Piers Francis, lovely guy, bit different. Like, Piers Francis' mates, Ed Sheeran, like, God knows where the night could have gone. He could have come in, saw his dad. Ed, here's a guitar. Off you go. Have a sing. Anyway, I'm like, so you're turning Ed Sheeran away from seeing his dad. And he's like, well, they all can't come in. And I was like, Ferg, you're joking me. But anyway, I, I said, I'm just going to get I, let Ed see his dad quickly. It was quite sad, really. I snuck Ed round the side. He'd get his dad a hug and left. Are you fucking oh serious? He didn't, let, you, he didn't, he didn't let, let Ed Sheeran in. in. You do- it's around my life. So anyway, you, honestly, this is yes, this happened. So then, <laughs> anyway, within minutes of him leaving, Jamie George and Elliot Daly run out like, "Is that uh, where's Ed Sheeran? Ed Sheeran's here, isn't he?" I was like, "Yeah, he was." 
He's gone now. Ben and Ferg wouldn't let him in because he didn't have a wristband. He didn't have a wristband. So bands. difficult. Anything to do with rugby, you're like, what um, idiots. Yeah, so then it's like the, the WhatsApp idiots. group's just pinging off like, fuck you, Bill. Fuck you, Ferg. Oh, what God. the fuck have you done? Ed Sheeran. Cheers, guys. Blah, blah, blah. Bill used to be a um, uh, Harry's close friend. Yeah. Yeah, he, so Bill he, was Harry's friend. He's, Bill's good. Yeah. I don't know. But Ferg, I don't know. But I met him a couple of times. They're really they're lovely guys. They're both like, they're not security. They're logistics. Close protection, they yeah. drink, They sit around. They drink coffee. They're really good morale. <laughs> um, like, um, but they used to be close help, protection they help, officers. They help, they help move kit. They help us do stuff. But certainly th those are their security interactions. Like they did turn away Ed Sheeran I because Piers Francis is friends. And it's, it's one set of rules for Piers Francis friends. I'd be it? livid. I'd, I'd, honestly, I'd, 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 I'd stand there and I'd go to like someone else's. I'd go, listen, I'd go, if my mum and dad were like, mum and dad, fuck off, Ed Sheeran. You I'd swap the bands out. It you was so yeah. embarrassing. So embarrassing. Yeah, that is tough. Um, can I ask you some questions, Johnny? Yeah. Al Ali Gray, would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or, ten or 20 duck-sized horses? Um... So this is interesting. I've been to Tbilisi and back since the last um, you did. podcast. Yeah. You did. And inevitably you end up playing with a game of would you rather. And to answer that question, I'd rather fight the the um, 20 duck sized duck horses. Size horses. I think, yeah, that's good. We, this is them. one that came up when we were in Tbilisi. Would you rather be on minimum wage for the rest of your life or be on a million pounds a year and have a snail that is constantly chasing you and if it touches you, you die. I'll I'd, have, I'd rather have a million quid a year in the fucking snail. I'll have what you're smoking, yeah. is what yeah. I, yeah. I will. You're not supposed to start the mushroom laws yet. You're supposed to wait until you retire, Johnny, but whatever. It's a good one, though, because it was well, fucking terrifying. A snail, like, I know they're slow, but it's just yeah, but knowing it's... But where does it start in relation to you? It, it well, start, right, so you go, right, snail there, you there, yeah, because if it fucking you go, snail. Have you not no. no. ever seen the snail trails in your house where the See, slug, slugs get under the door? But, but you can do nothing about the snail. The snail so you can't is, ever get always rid of it. knows where you are and it is tracked on you Yeah, but hold always. on, but where does it start in relation to you? Because right, it, starts within, a snail it starts within five metres of you. You're making this up now. No, no, you can't. Five metres? You fall asleep, the fucking thing will be in your mouth. So then your options are you need to emigrate. You need right. You start here with the snail. Oh well, that's easy. I'm fucking Australia. Yeah. Good so luck. then we did the maths. I can't so never get so over the sea. Yeah. So then we did the maths, and it was the snail can move. Um, it takes the Who snail. Who did the maths? You imagine these cretinous rugby players sitting around. I did it. I did it. Are you, I did it. Are you no. playing this game with others or yeah, just with yourself? Not on myself. <laughs> yeah. No, with, with the voice, others. Have you got an imaginary friend, by the no, way? No, no, no. The snail takes 1.39 days to travel a mile, and that meant that it took over 40 years to get to Australia. But if it's like a so and it can travel. It can travel through water. That we decided it travels through water at the same pace as on land, like a, like a whelk. They're like water snails, aren't they? So it's a, it can do both. Yeah. Right. But then the so question. So you know what I do? Yeah. I'd, so then I said we go to Australia for forty years, then come back. No, you go for twenty years because then the snail's halfway, yeah, and then you can come back yeah. again because the fucking thing's got to turn around. Yeah, and then, come you've back got, again. then you've got to move twice. That's so right. twenty, you've twenty, got a twenty, twenty. Year. Yeah. You do what you want. You can do what you um, want. But then, Apart from the then, then, the snail's going to get then, you. Then In the fact, bit. Johnny, you give it a year, it's already offshore, so you can come back <laughs> yeah. for a month or two yeah. at a time. Yeah. Then it's going to... Yeah, yeah, you could. So actually, yeah. just you yeah. have six months in the US. Yeah. Let's tie the fucking thing out. Let's go six <laughs> months in the US. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? Let's Shut go it. six months in the US. Let's it'll set the off free. there. Yeah. And then he gets to the US. It's like halfway to the US. Yeah, but then... I'm off to Australia. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is where it got like... He's gone. He's dead, Johnny. This is where it got like really difficult. We were like, can the snail jump on transport like can it jump well, on the well, you you're writing can the it rules. slime up to at shit at that point I said fuck it if it's on a, like a motorbike or a cab or a plane I'm, I'm taking no, no, minimum no, no, wage no, no. it could probably slug its way onto a plane we said for the sake of it it's not allowed it can just even snail so, like, what, if a snail well, is jumping are if you how do we track the snail no is it tracks you you don't yeah, know but where but it is are we allowed to you don't but that's ridiculous why it's hunting what, you. So, what do you mean? Why it's ridiculous? <laughs> we're, we're quite far into the conversation to be asking that. Yeah, I'm confused. The snail knows where you are. You, you don't know, know where you never know like, You could look and be like, "Oh, the snail! Like it's there." How big's the snail? It's just normal size. If it can get on transport, I just do minimum wage. It's just too much stress. <laughs> no, but because it, it doesn't, you, you, you die if it touches you. Yes. No. But we did have a, like a good I half hour. I play school. <laughs> we did have a good. We did have a good half hour over the snail. But I decided if it can get on cars and planes and trains and but then I'm just taking them the minimum wage. That, that's what I miss more than anything. It's like killing time. Just killing point. This conversation. Like, would you rather? Yeah. Like the idea of being attacked that's by a rogue just snail. Podcast, isn't it? <laughs> it's very much true. Okay. Like, What's the best back three in world rugby right now? Pick your dream back three. Um, who's the best fullback in the game right now? Bone Barrett. 
yeah, I go, yeah, maybe. Listen, I'd maybe go. Oh, I, 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 yeah, Bowden Barrett, Chesham Colby. Um, I'd chuck somebody like Zam on the other wing. Excuse me, like yeah, that, yeah, something like Zam. That'd oh. be quite cool, wouldn't it? Is he Fast. quick? Quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. top three things on your bucket list. Last question. Um, I want to buy a holiday home. Um, snail proof one, actually. <laughs> yeah, snail proof holiday home next to a golf course. Um, what, anywhere in particular country? It's just hot. I think that would be nice. Oh. Does this, is, d it, would the, could you use like snail pellets wherever you go? As in, would the, or is it immune to that? I reckon it. No, you can't kill the snail. Well, you can make it very ill. <laughs> or you can make it. Like, no, know. it moves. It moves in mysterious at, ways. At, at you put constant glass? pace. What if you put glass it down? At constant pace. Slugs over but grass. But if you put, if you if you went to bed glass. and you surrounded your bed in pellets, yeah, yeah. it gets through them. Can How? It? So it's, this, it's, this, it's the way the snail is made. I don't think you've thought this through. Yeah. What about you put broken glass? Could it, would it snail over the glass? Yeah. It, just snail, it, it, it constantly moves at a snail's can pace. It, can it go through fire? Yeah. It can go, this snail goes through fire. It goes through <laughs> everything. Oh, be careful. This, okay. Fucking hell, Bucket list. Golf course. Hot. Do you play golf? A little bit. I like play like four rounds over the off season, then I get all right, and then I stop completely. But you want to buy a house next to a golf course? Yeah. Because it's, because it's, it's just so it's good mindfulness. The golf course is great. Like, um, right. You like Cornwall, don't you? I've been in Cornwall, bumped into you before. I bumped into you on Pulse Beach. Everybody, like, everybody quite likes Cornwall. And your dad, I met your dad as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't say anything, though. You he just was like petrified of him. <laughs> I was like the press. Oh, the media? You thought he was wearing a white? Yeah. Yeah. We were like, I was on holiday. <laughs> he like, gave one word answers, holiday. and your dad was really chatty. Yeah, you yeah. I never switch off. Was yeah. he like hiding behind his dad's legs? I was like, we're like, live on Sky Sports you know, News. Like, Welcome yeah. along. If Bodie comes and like, she runs, and runs up and hugs me and hides behind my leg when people talk, was he like hiding behind his dad's leg? on my bucket list? So lodge on a golf course. Yeah. Snail proof bed. Yeah. What else? What would you car? Do you want a nice car? Not really bothered by that. Clothes? Um, I hate clothes. Would you like a personal masseur or a yoga person or something? What's on? Can we can we ask like take it in Should turns? Be a bucket list. I've done one. What's yours? It's hard on question. On my you bucket think. list. So, I. Well, I've got a few actually. I, oh, I would well love done. to have six months, just to go to an island and paddle around on a surfboard. I would really love that. On your own. I'd probably have to take my wife and children. <laughs> they're a little bit like the snail; like they will, they will come too, and, <laughs> and I'll probably die if, if they touch yeah. me. If they don't, if they don't come, so um, the I, I would, the I would love a really, really good six months sabbatical. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere. I don't. <sighs> oh, you get bored quickly, I reckon. I, I'm not sure I would. I, I'm living quite a lot of my dreams. But I don't really have. Uh, yeah, so it's hard, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, house, flat. Yeah, house, a stable marriage, uh, <laughs> roof over my head. Um, now I. James what? Haskell takes yet another swipe. <laughs> yeah, yet made another, another, another swipe. Um, I would say, where would I? What would I do? Maybe uh, I'd like to have a chef. That'd be game changer. Really? On the bucket, that'd be just like to take care of me all the time. That'd be unbelievable. Just eating. You see, food. you're the kind of person that would actually go out and get that. Yeah, I reckon probably, you might yeah. have a house instead of that. If yeah. it's like three, yeah. if it's like three wishes, which it basically is, isn't it? A bucket list is like yeah. you get a lamp and you you might as well just wish for loads of money. No, do you know, I, I've, I figured out. Then you just, can do basically what you no, want. No, it's the last thought. I've, I figured out how to defeat the um, that you know three wishes thing. You, My first wish, you best you you wish to be the best at everything in the world. No. You wish for as many wishes as you no, want. No, no, because you can't do that. They always say that caveat. You can't ask more oh, wishes. It's like Johnny, you're changing the fucking no, no, rules. No, no, no that's game. what they always say. Aladdin is the, is the kind of... But then the you'd, fact be the, you'd be the best at bad things as well. Well, but only if you tried well, to do the bad worst, things. That would be though, wouldn't it? Hey. Only if you tried to do the bad things. Yeah. Because if, 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 if you were the then best, no, but that's what I mean. But you're the best you'd at money. then be tempted to do bad things because you're good at them. Yeah, but then, but then you'd be like the best at dying fast. So nah. it could, it could all nah, unravel. That's but not a good one. No, but I'm pretty certain that doesn't. That's not how it works. I go, I'm the best at everything in the world, so I could, you know, or I could be the best at anything I try. There's no. That's like I'll, you need balance in the world. You need like yin and yang. I wouldn't try to. I wouldn't like try to be the best footballer in the world. I probably would. It gets very. Deep but then you wouldn't. Then there'd be no fun in being the. Do you see what I mean? Like you could curse yourself. Like well, it's a, a lot. Of, well, I mean, Ronaldo's having a bit of fun. The Messi does a bit of fun. I'd be quite. Yeah, there's probably things I he think can't I've do. Got, but also, if you cut, if you've like got an understanding of like life, I'm not. I wouldn't be sure. Like you would, I would, if I got a billion dollars, I wouldn't like lose my mind. Mm. Wouldn't you? No. I don't want a billion dollars. I do, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't. You wouldn't I'm, suddenly see me like. Oh my god, he's, he's dying. Like, that, like, the more intelligent you are, the less happy you are. So like you could end yes. up you could end up being so clever but that you get answers that you don't want and then you're upset. Yeah, of course. But yeah. I often think so that people, isn't a good the wish. The people who have the most often are the least happy as well. You beca you but you you're you you sort of get distorted yeah. by it. Yeah, as long as you I, as you need purpose. purpose. There's balance. Yes. You need isn't somebody there. get up in the morning for and you need good people around yeah. you and the rest yeah. of it's all incidental. It's been another magical mystery tour through the magical mind of 
I d- I'm, not gonna listen, I'm not going to listen to this back because I don't want. I, I want to remember it as it was before it's going to be heavily redacted. Yes. Oh, I can't listen. I didn't watch. I can't listen I've to my own voice. Yeah, I don't too much. I, it's it? not even that. I just I remember what it was like. The purity of it. I don't want to remember what it was going to be like. Should we therefore just say to the listeners and the viewers, this has been about the most amazing two hours you that we've than enjoyed the first one. of 2024 so far. So far, yeah. But whatever they get given is down Might to the be, lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give you a nod for the good rugby that's on your telly box this weekend because the Investic Champions Cup is back. Mm-hmm. ITV won at one. Exeter against Glasgow Warriors. Saturday lunchtime, if you fancy that. Exeter obviously looking to get back to big performances. That is followed by Leinster against Stade Francais, who are third in the top 14. TNT and RT at 5.30. On Sunday afternoon, it's an absolute belter. Slam in the lamb, lock the door and light the fire because you've got Bath Racing 92 who are top of the top 14. That is the game of the weekend, I reckon. TNT Sports, 1 o'clock on Sunday. Then you've got defending champions La Rochelle against Leicester at 3.15. And Bordeaux Begler, who are second in the top 14 against Saris at 5.30. Owen Farrell is off to France, screams the headline, uh, if he isn't already. I think it's some quite good... I'm DJ Ministry of Sound Friday night. The 12th. Tickets still available. Tickets still available. Shadow Child, Juan Clement, Crucy, myself, Cassim. Where do you do that? Name room. Tw- I'm pl- it's the Ministry of Sound in London. Oh, it's a place. It's a place, yes. Okay. Who the have you got, uh, got to play this weekend? <laughs> uh, Edinburgh away. Are you, are you, you not you, electricity? Where's that? that Ministry of Pardon? Sound? Are you in for that? I'm available for, wow. selection. I'm available for selection. And then I'm DJing in Val Terenz, a place called Freeze. On, uh, on, on Monday night, I'm uh, um, Summit Nightclub. Uh, and then Tuesday, 360. If you're in Val Terenz and you're skiing and you're posh and you want to have a pie, come and sell it. If you're not posh, you're welcome too. There's a little bit of rugby for you on ITV, TNT and RTE. There is some music there if you'd like to go and find Hask wherever he's just mentioned. Uh, the lock-in is available as per normal via Apple and Spotify. Johnny is making his debut. Should we chuck out a bottle of Black Eye this week? Yep. Um, to George. We said, um, who did you say? I thought George Skimmington could do with a drink. Yeah, yeah, landlord could do with a little bottle of black eye. You know, six, nine games on the bounce, lost. Um, How are you getting on down there? It's going well. You don't, it's all right, we'll send it to him. You don't need to take it you down, won't, Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Well, maybe you get him in the good books. Um, a little present for the yeah. landlord? Drink okay, responsibly, yeah. Don't utilise it to get away with sorrow. Utilise it just to enjoy it for its sort of citrus base. The point of Black Eye, though, is you ride the storms and you celebrate the good yeah. times yeah. and the sunshine. So let's Fingers send a bottle crossed. down to George Skivington and hopefully fortunes turn at King's yeah. Home before too long. Just a reminder that a bottle of Black Eye goes every week to someone who we celebrate for alternative reasons or someone who needs to pick me up. Uh, Black Eye Gin is available from Amazon, Selected Sainsbury's and Master of Malt. We've got some really exciting... Opportunities coming in the not-too-distant future as well. It has got botanicals from every major rugby-playing nation and one very special ingredient. And £1.50 from every bottle girl are sold goes into the Black Eye Rugby Fund, which is aiming to raise a million pounds a year to help with the areas of risk, research and recovery within the game of rugby union. We are already into five figures raised, which is very exciting. And we're asking rugby fans swap a beer for a gin and tonic, and you can do that to help the game you love. That is it for this week's show. It's never easy laying down a second album, but your thoughts on this week's show? Um, we'll just have to wait and see, but um, I've had fun again. Have you enjoyed it? No, it's been so good, thank you. It's in the hands really of God, and you didn't talk yourself out of any sort. No, you you've done very, on, as a performance, At you've done extremely well. Yeah, you, and you only urinated once. Yeah, yeah, which is good. You've so had half a packet of halls. We haven't needed the diapers or the, the ice, cream, ice cream. I feel like it's a bit of a shame it melted. Is there even ice cream yeah. in there? There yeah, is. Yeah, it's yeah, tough. Yeah. You, sh- you can, should never eat melted ice cream. Don't refreeze it. Why? Uh, it's what grows back to it, make you ill. Right. There you are. Lovely little tip for you. It's been a hell of a show this week. I, we, we've we've toured a bit, haven't we? Yeah, we've gone round. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's. Please what share. Do. Please subscribe, and we'll, we'll catch you very soon. We have been the good, the bad, and the rugby in partnership with our very good friends at Continental Tires. Thank you, as always, for your support. We are a folding pocket production. Stats and facts provided by Oval Insights where appropriate. And this episode was produced by Tom Edwards. See you next week. Well done, Johnny. Thank you. Well done, Johnny.